try that. So <clears throat> and I'm going to use uh, photons because the, the real experiment, not all actually were done with photons, but the one I'm going to report on. So I need two pictures. I need a picture of a photon, so it's a particle of light, but you can also think of an atom if you prefer it, you have a bit more comfortable. But the important is here, as indicated, this photon carries some structure. So there is some structure, or some form, whatever you want to call it, of some quantum state. Um, and in practice, it means it's a polarized photon. So the electric field oscillates in a very uh, ordinate way. And here, with this picture, we represent the same particle, the same photon, or at least the same amount of energy, or the same kind of uh, atom, but here unstructured, without any structure. So this is like, if you like, like dust, and this one is now something which has some, some shape, some structure. Uh, and in practice, this would be an unpolarized photon where the electric field fluctuates in all directions simultaneously. Okay, now to do teleportation, you need, of course, a sender and a receiver. Uh, and you can have, in principle, arbitrary long distance in between. And then you need entangled photons. And you need two entangled photons, these two entangled photons. So entanglement is also the basis, uh, the cause of non-locality that we uh, talked about quite a lot here. And when you have two entangled photons, Tony has seen try to make that very clear in his presentation. Each photon by itself will just give a random answer, whatever the question is. <coughs> so each photon by itself is totally unstructured because you just get a random answer, whatever the question. And the same for the other. But remember, because we are entangled, <coughs> if you ask the same question on both sides, you will get the same answer. <coughs> that was exactly the, the basis of uh, Tony Asin's uh, presentation. So now to do this teleportation, you use, for instance, uh, sorry, use for instance two optical fibers, and you send these photons, one to the sender, one to the receiver, and then you can remove these optical fibers. So now you have to imagine that you have at some point, some location, you have a photon, and at a distance that can again be really arbitrary large, in theory, practice it's by this distance here, <coughs> the other photon. So on each side, whatever you do here, you just get a random number out, same here. Might be the same random number, which is already mysterious, that's the non-locality. But that's all what you get here. Um, now, to do teleportation, you take a third photon, and that photon now carries some structure. So this one has a well-defined pure quantum state. In, in Gilles Brassard's language, it's pure quantum state here. And this photon now you want to teleport. So to teleport, first you put it into the teleporter, into the, the, the transmitter here, send it in. So at this point, you have two photons here, one that carries a structure, one that does not carry any structure, but which is entangled with a photon that by itself also doesn't carry structure, but which is so the twin or the, the entangled photon from one of these. So at this point, I'm going to close the boxes. And here, I need to do something here. <coughs> so technically, we say this is a Bell measurement or a Bell state measurement, mm -hmm. whatever. We do something, and important here is that these two photons, we need to interact. We have to do something together. And to understand teleportation intuitively, you may say, we're going to ask a question to these two photons, and it will be the following question. Are you similar? And the idea is we're asking this this question to the photons, and we expect that the photons, if the photon tell us, yes, we are similar, that means that if I would ask the same question to the two photons, I would get the same answer from both. But remember, one of these two photons was enti is entangled with a photon here, so now we have that the new photon, the one that I want to teleport, in case I get the answer, yes, we are similar, will give me always the same answer as the entangled photo on that side, but that entangled photon gives also the same answer on that one. So now, actually I could <coughs> ask the question on this side, and I will for sure always get the same answer of the photon that was to be teleported. Huh? And that indeed, now I can do that. However, this is quantum physics, and you know that we don't get only one possible answer. There are several possible answers at random. That's this quantum randomness that we talk so much about. And because here we have two photons, it's not a binary answer, it's not yes, no. 
there are four possible results, and I may label these four possible results 0, 90, 180, 270 degrees, because the magic of entanglement or quantum teleportation is that <coughs> when I do this measurement, I will get one of these four possible results at random. So 25% chances for the first one, 25% for the second one, 25 for the third one, 25 for the last one. But whatever result I get there, the photon on this side, the photon on this side now has acquired a structure. It's no longer an unstructured photon, so it has at a distance acquired a state. This is non-locality again. On the other side, this one has lost its structure, so the structure of that one, the quantum state, the form, whatever you want to call it, has been teleported on that side. Now, which exact state do you have here, which exact structure do you have here, that depends on the, on the result here. If you got the result yes, zero, uh, sorry, the result zero, zero means yes, we are similar. And yes, we are similar means that this one now, is in the, the blue one, has exactly the state of the initial one. Although no one knows this state. Of course, here I had to make a picture, so it points to the left. But even if you would not know in which direction it points, it would now point, this one would now point exactly in the same direction as the original one that we had here uh, below previously. And here, if the result is 90, then this one is the original one rotated precisely by 90 degrees. And if you get a result 180, it's precisely rotated by 180 or by 270 for the last uh, possibility. So in, in order to really terminate the quantum uh, teleportation protocol, the sender tells the receiver which result he got. <coughs> and then the receiver knows by how much he needs to rotate his photon to recover exactly the initial photon. So that's a way of teleporting. Uh, some people say teleporting a photon, but the question is certainly, what do we teleport exactly? So let me we'll come back to that question. Just to tell you, so uh, well, let's go very quick here, because you don't want to know the experimental details here. But just to tell you, I mean, this uh, again, the kind of experiments you can do between, this is our lab in Geneva. This is a Swisscom station somewhere downtown. So you can really do that over optical fibers. Again, the optical fibers, remember, there is no optical fiber during the teleportation. There is only an optical fiber that is necessary to install the entanglement. So the, en the, the fiber is there, plays the same role here as the ship that you need in order to install a telephone line between Europe and the US. You don't need the ship to make the phone, but you need the ship to install the telephone line. Here we need the optical fiber to install entanglement, or you may say entanglement is the quantum teleportation channel or line. You need the fiber to install the line, but once it is installed, you don't need the fiber any longer. OK, and then a few questions. So the first question, what can be teleported? So first remark, this is a bad question. What? The good question is, what can carry the quantum information or the quantum state, the quantum structure to be teleported? And uh, so a photon that has been done, an atom, well, that's old slide. It has been done now. Uh, molecules, I'm pretty sure that will happen. It hasn't been done yet. People are working on teleporting structures of viruses. Uh, it's really not clear today whether we can do that someday, but at least people are optimistic. And then large objects, like this object, for instance. Right. Um, and here, this is still science fiction. So it's, and even if you give me unlimited money, I, I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> so here, here the problem is not money, here the problem is ideas, which is much more difficult to obtain. Okay, well, so that's the status. Now the next question, that's the last one I want us to address maybe. Uh, what is teleported? So that comes back to the, actually the, the question that raised uh, this morning. Um, so, uh, and also come back to someone that was mentioned this morning, Aristotle. <laughs> uh, objects are constituted by matter and form. Uh, I guess today's uh, physicist would say elementary particle, that's the matter, mm -hmm. and quantum states, that's the structure, form, 
And uh, they clearly, matter and energy cannot be teleported from one place to the other. And by teleported, I really mean transferred from one place to another without passing through any intermediate location. When I go from here back to my seat there, you will see that I go for intermediate location. <laughs> so I'm not going to teleport myself. <laughs> However, what is really fascinating is that if we really now understand that quantum states, the ultimate structure of objects, can be teleported, so they can really go from one place to another without passing by any intermediate location, you just dis disappear here and they reappear there simultaneously, <coughs> non locality. Um, so if you, if you understand that, then you probably agree with me that objects can be transferred from one place to another because the, f the form of the object can go from one place to the other without ever existing in be uh, anywhere in between. Yeah. Sorry? No. That's information. It's information. Well, it's information, but certainly not information in the sense uh, of, uh, of Bob, because this information is not the information that you can write down on a piece of paper. And actually, that's the difference. Some, some people, when we confuse teleportation with a quantum fax, <laughs> and it's, it's very different, because during a quantum teleportation process, the original system is necessarily destroyed. You, you cannot copy quantum information. So in this sense, quantum information is very different from ordinary information. Ordinary information, I mean, probably the, the, the major quality of information is that you can copy it, you can broadcast it. Whereas quantum information, maybe the word is not well chosen, but that's the official terminology, is characterized by the fact that you cannot copy it. Um, and so when you do teleportation, the original part needs to be destroyed. Okay, I think uh, I'll stop here. We thank you very much, Nicolas, for this so excellent talk. Could you read that last question. one? Yeah. Yeah. I want to read the bottom of it. Sure. That last one you had just before. Yeah. And could, could you explain why it can't be copied? Yeah. Um, so we have non-locality, but as has also been emphasized already by several speakers, this non-locality cannot be used to signal. And the reason for that, maybe I can go back here a bit. Let me just go a bit quicker like that. Yeah. When we have this situation, so that's the situation where we have 25% of the blue situation probability of having the blue situation, 25, the green situation, and so on. So we have a, a mixture here. We have a probability distribution, which is just ignorance, so just epistemic probability, not difficult to understand. But when you have in quantum mechanics a mixture of different possibilities, you no longer have a pure state, you have a mixed state, as Gilles told us yesterday. And this mixed state, is such that when you ask a question here to this mixed state, you will get a random answer. So this mixed state, whatever question you get a random answer, is undistinguishable from what you had here before. So that's why you have no signaling. As long as you just sit on that side, you don't see any difference. <coughs> a difference has occurred, but you cannot see it yet. You need this two bit of information. You, you need to know which result came in order to be able to do that, to see the difference. However, suppose now that here we, there is a, a, Xerox ma a quantum Xerox machine, a quantum cloning machine, as we say, which is such that you input a photon in whatever sta state it is, you don't need to know which state it is, and it comes out doubled. Now you have two copies. So now instead of having here a mixture of these four possibilities, you would have a mixture of either two photons to the left, two photons up, two photons right, or two photons down. And this one is such that there are measurements that allow you to distinguish that one from the previous state. So if you would have a quantum cloning machine, you could signal. So if you buy no signaling, which, well, I think any reasonable person buys easily, even independently of relativity, because 
if you can communicate at a distance instantaneously, somehow it's not a physical process, in, it is not in space-time again. You, you need time to communicate. <coughs> And, uh, okay. yeah. Le leave it there. In yeah. that left box, you've got still two photons? Yeah. So, we uh, so what's destroyed? Yeah. What's destroyed? <laughs> their, their structure? Sorry? What is destroyed? Their structure? Yeah. Ah, okay. You remember, one of these two photons had a structure that was the initial structure, right. and that structure got disappeared. Mm -hmm. Now we have two photons that are actually they are entangled, but so it means each photon by itself carries no structure any longer. So it's not prime matter. Yeah, I, I know you could mislead people by saying, you know, that photon was destroyed, but it wasn't destroyed. No, it's the structure that the structure, was destroyed. Yeah, the Indeed, so that's very important. I mean, the number of photons here was two and is still two. Yeah. The number of photons have not changed. So the amount the of energy, or if yes. you weight the box, mm -hmm. it has not changed. History particularized, the form, it would be said, the form is <coughs> taken from one portion of matter and reparticularized re in another portion of matter. Yeah. Yes. But the prime yeah. matter. Sorry, for the philosophers, the prime matter is not destroyed. Yes, but the Platonic philosopher always say that that's a very important point because that shows you that the structure and the body, the, the form and the body could be separated. Yes. You see what I mean? Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's, 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 an, that's an interesting. interesting that's a Platonistic vision. Sure. There's not, there's not a close, there's not a complete, uh, absolute link between the form and the body. <laughs> it's why I'm a Platonist. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know it's a shame. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, yes, that was good. That was good. Uh, 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 and one well, this is a quick question. Is, so the structure, on your view, if you can maybe qualify what you mean by this, is it a thing? Do you think of it as a thing? Or could you maybe describe to me what you understand as structure? Well, I think here I have more Aristotelian point of view. I mean, the objects or the thing, is really has two, two constituents. Yes. Is matter or energy, or in my language maybe I would say elementary particles, mm -hmm. and there is form or structure, or in my language quantum states. So the, the, the structure is, is one of the two constituents that make, that make a, a thing or an object. John no, actually is wrong there because he right. said that the, the body can, the form can no, exist more, independent more. of the I body. Found, I found no, the I don't say this. I think you can transfer the form yeah. from one body to another body. No, I no, mean, no. from one photon to no. another okay. photon. Okay. Okay. You have this in front of the your eyes. You cannot so deny this. On, so we have to this this you this cannot deny this. And so it's once again, you see. How useful is that philosophers <coughs> interact with physics? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, fascinating. Well, fascinating. Okay. Thank you and uh, Thank you. Um, I will only to complete for you know probably this can clarify no to you, Russell. Why no cloning? How? Why no signaling? Probably uh, um, and, 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 uh, another argu argument completing what Nicola said is that. If you could uh, signal faster than light, you could change your past. Okay, this you will like this because causality. Eh? That is the the, the the consequence. You could change the past. Okay.